Deb Tucker here from Studio 180 Design. I know many of you have picked up the Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star over the last couple of years and given it a try. But what I want to do here in this video today is give you some ideas, some things that you might, some things you may have thought about, some things you may not have thought about as ways to vary your workings with the Lemoyne Star Ruler. And if you want to see how to do it, please check out my video on how to make the Lemoyne Star. But these are some of the things that I do to vary things up a little bit with many of my projects. One of these first, the first variations is, that's probably one most of you have done. It's where you keep the background strips and the diamond strips all the same. It ends up giving you blocks that look like this. Both the same background, both the same diamond strips, you end up with solid color looking stars very quickly, very easily. That's what I consider number one. Number two is another simple variation. If you take the strips that you start with and you keep the background fabrics the same but change the diamond strips, you'll end up with a block that looks like this. The diamond strips alternate purple to pink, purple to pink. It'll happen automatically. You don't have to plan it, but that's a simple variation. Background's the same, diamond's different. This variation is one that some of you may or may not have tried, where you start with two different background fabrics and two different diamond fabrics. Now that variation can give you a couple of other variations in your blocks. And when you look at these, both of these blocks came from these starter strips. They look a little bit different, however. Let me move these out of the, out of the way and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. When we look at this particular block here, you'll notice that the section area in the, in the quadrant has two beige and then the next has two whites and then the background has two beige and then two whites. When you look at this one, the background alternates every piece, white, beige, white, beige, white, beige. The way you make these is a very simple change. When you construct the units, after you've done your strip piecing and your, and your trim apart, you have side triangles that you add. To make this variation, the side triangle actually matches the strip piece section. So the beige matches the beige and the white matches the white. To get this variation, instead of matching the beige triangle to the beige strip piece section, I've changed it and alternated and put the white triangle in there. So the white is now teamed up with the beige and here where I would normally have put the white like the one above, I put the beige. So that gives me that every other white, beige, white, beige, all the way around my block. Neither one is more right or more wrong than the other. They're just simple changes and variations. One of the blocks, this is an old block, I'm not sure whether they call it snow crystals or something along that line, but this is a block that uses that same changing of those side triangles. The block itself has four separate Lemoyne stars in it. If we take a look at just one of the Lemoynes, you, and we take a look at the, the quarters or the quadrants, the one that's in the far corner has white, 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 white all the way around the outside. The one that's here has white, 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 and then I've substituted one of those side triangles with a gold. Same thing happens on the, the quarter that's down here, white, 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 substituted just one of those side triangles to put the gold in the right position. And then that last quarter section has white pieces that come from the strip piecing. And then it has two small triangles. The side triangles are gold again and added on just like I did the other one. Now this one takes a little more planning, uh, but it's not overly difficult once you've played with those simple variations that we talked about prior to this. So again, one of the nice things about my Lemoyne Star construction method is that you actually make the Lemoyne Star as quarters. We've talked about that a little bit earlier, but we're also going to talk about that here. Now I can take the Lemoyne quarters and put them together, trim them all down, and have a Lemoyne Star block. But whether you thought about it or not, I can also take these Lemoyne quarters and treat them as squares. Trim off the dog ears, pick up my Tucker trimmer tool, my favorite trim down, 
line up my cleanup lines and trim them down so that I'm going to end up with squares that have diamonds in them. Now, I can use these like I would any other square. I can take the squares and put them together like this and create a Lemoyne star, something like this, but I could also use them to maybe create a border. I could put pieces together that look like that and create a border. I can take these Lemoyne quarters and use them with hourglass units, use them with individual squares to create a block that looks like this. I can take any of those Lemoyne quarters and team them up with squares that are simple squares. I can team them up with four patches. So there's lots of different ways that I can use these Lemoyne quarters. Make a block that looks like that, substitute the simple squares with something that looks like this. Are any of these more right or wrong than the other? They're not. They're just different. I want to encourage all of you to give some of these things a try, try and give yourself permission to play. So, next on the list, we have something that some of you may have done by mistake. Normally, when you sew your two Lemoyne Star sections together, your piece triangles, you put them together along the long edge to give you a square. Now, some of you, when you've put them together, I'm certain of it because I know I made this mistake once or twice. Instead of stitching on the long edge, I actually stitched on the short edge so that when I opened it up after my stitching was done, oh, heavens, I've got a triangle. I don't have a square, but that's okay. Most of you probably took it apart and turned it into a square, but I can take this and use it, take a triangle here, take another triangle here, end up with a piece triangle, and then I can use that as a design element and make blocks that look like this, a nice little basket block. A couple of the patterns that I have out there right now actually use this technique. All these piece triangle sections are what you see in the quilt that's behind me here, and this is also in my crown jewel pattern, so you might want to check that out for more information on those. Now, one of the other things that I've been playing with is using my sections not together to create squares or together to create triangles, but using the sections with something else. Both of these blocks, the Lemoyne Star sections, were teamed up with a simple half square triangle to give me a pinwheel block. Again, no more right or wrong than the other. It's just something different that I can use with my tool. The one thing that I want you to realize though is if you make all of your A sections and your B sections, they will spin your pinwheels in different directions. My A sections, when I team them up with a blank or with a plain triangle, will spin things in one direction. The B sections will spin things in the other direction. So if you want them all spinning in the same direction, just make piece A sections and team them up with plain triangles or make all B sections and that way all of your pinwheels will spin in the same direction. Little hint, ask me how I know some of this stuff. It's because I've done those mistakes. This is an interesting little block. It's that same pieced triangle section there teamed up with not just a simple triangle, but a triangle is made of strips. Again, is it right? Is it wrong? It's neither. It's just another variation on the theme. One of the things that I was playing with a couple days ago, the thought went through my head, what if instead of using a single strip for my diamonds, I take and, and strip piece my diamonds. So instead of a single pink strip here, I've made a pink and green instead of a single purple like I did showed you earlier. I've got them pieced together. Look at this interesting end result. It's a beautiful little star. Uh, they happen to be pretty close in, in measurements right here, but they don't have to. One can be wide and one can be narrow, but it gives me a block that looks very different than those traditional Lemoyne stars that you may have played with in the past. Some of the other things that we can make with this. I don't know if you've ever tried to put things in circles, 
But one of the nice things about the Lemoyne Star, because there's extra fabric built in, and those of you who've made it know what I'm talking about, there's extra fabric on the east and west, and there's extra fabric on the north and south, you are then able to trim that block, not into a square, but into a circle. You can take the circle piece and insert it into a frame and end up having Lemoines in circles. What an interesting thought. What an interesting thing to do. One of the things that I'm asked all the time is, what do I do with that blunt end of the ruler? There's a little bit of information on the back of the instructions, and it talks about fussy cutting. By fussy cutting, I use the back end of that ruler to individually, to fussy cut shapes. I like to cut those shapes out of striped fabrics. I can cut them out of fancy floral fabrics, but cutting them out of striped fabrics gives me some very interesting end results. I can't construct everything with strips like I do normally, but there's more information coming out on those techniques for fussy cutting. These are fussy cut from a pretty uh, busy floral strip. This, actually these, are cut from simple striped fabric. This was a simple yellow and white striped fabric. This was a very simple green and white fabric. And did a little bit of fussy cutting using the back end of that ruler, built my pieces, trimmed them down to size. Every block is perfect when I'm done. So those are some of the variations. What I'd like to do is just peel through some of the uh, other things that I'm thinking about. This is what I call a banded Lemoyne. I'm doing a, a diamond in the middle and adding some logs on the edges, creating the pieces slightly oversized and trimming it down. Once I learned how to do the banded Lemoynes, I thought about teaming the banded Lemoynes up with regular Lemoyne sections to give me yet a different look. I can take my banded Lemoynes and I can turn them into my triangle sections, build a basket. This is one of my favorite blocks. Uh, there's more coming on how I make that block, but that's a banded Lemoyne basket. Here's yet another variation. It was just a little block that I was playing with. I used simple Lemoynes in the corner uh, with the diamond strips that are all the same and the backgrounds that are all the same. Teamed it up with the V-block units, teamed it up with my square squared units, and don't know that this one has a name yet, but I'll, I'm working on it. We'll figure out what we're going to call this. It's a block I made the other day. I used my banded Lemoines in the corner. I used hourglass units that I trim from with my Tucker trimmer and then made a smaller individual Lemoine star and set it in the middle. Again, nothing is in writing about these yet. These are just ideas for you to play with. Here we go again. We have those banded Lemoines. These bands are a little wider than I liked, but I was determined to use them in something. Teamed them up with V-block units that have a piece background in the and the piece background section for the V section and a nine patch, and we've got something simple. And again, you know, you can mix and match any of the techniques that we've done so far. This is that simple variation of every other diamond here set inside of a circle. The points on this one match exactly set on in, in the circle. The points on this one, I've used the banded Lemoyne, and the points actually float a little bit on this one. Maybe a little bit easier to put together. Many of these variations are available on our technique sheets. They're single page how to do something else with your Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star tool. Now, if you don't have one of those tools, visit your local quilt shop, ask them about the tool, pick up a technique sheet, and if you can't find it there, please come and visit our website. And while you're on our website, sign up for our newsletter. That way, as I come up with something new, a new technique sheet or a new process, you'll be the first to hear about it.